Let's get ready to receive the word of the Lord. God wants to speak to us this morning about how we can love Him. We are coming back to our series on culture makers. We want to use our church name, uh, F-A-I-T-H, to point us to five important values that all of us are connected to. And today our letter is I talking about intimacy with God, how to love God. Because if you ask what is one of the most important things in your life, what is one of the most important things in the life of a church, uh, that will be loving God. And that is why we are here. And that is why we have new friends who are here. And when new friends come, they are looking at how we love God and how we also worship Him as a church. So today, we're going to look at I representing intimacy with God. We started the series by looking at F, having fearless faith. The Bible calls us to walk by faith, not by sight. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We went on to talk about A, authentic relationship how we want to be real in our walk with one another, in our friendships, in our ministry relationship. Uh, we want to bring out the love of God and we also want to receive the love of God one from another. So today, I is intimacy with God and then we are going to do a last part which is next Sunday on H that will be honouring others. You notice that we have skipped T because T represents transformation and we usually do that in our missions uh, weekends. So let's pray and receive the word of the Lord this morning. Father, thank you that you are here with us. We sense your presence. You are enthroned in our hearts. You are enthroned in this assembly. Open up the word of God. Speak to us and put a deep love in our hearts. Uh, put a deep love in our hearts for Jesus this morning. We receive this and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. My sermon title is Choose Life, Love God. And if I were to ask you this morning, what do you love most about God? What do you love most about God? Ever since you got to know God personally, Ever since you become a child of God or a Christian, ever since your friend introduced Jesus to you, maybe you haven't received Jesus into your heart yet this morning, but you are starting to think about God. What is it that you love or you admire or you worship about God? There is a song that we often sing entitled 10,000 Reasons. 10,000 Reasons Why We Can Love God why we love God, why we can love Him more. Of course, there are more than 10,000 reasons for us to love God. So we can say, oh, you know, when I, when I think about God, I think about His grace, how He always showers favor and blessings and help and provisions upon our lives. Some of us, when we say, when we think about God, I think about the time He healed us of our diseases and sicknesses. Some of us, when we think about God, we think about His holiness and how that encourages us in the midst of sufferings and pain in this world. There are so many things when we come to the Bible, when we look at our lives, that we say, hey, this is why I love God. This is uh, why I don't want to stop loving God. While this is a journey of discovering how to love God, just as we learn how to love people, right? We learn how to love our children. We, love, we learn how to love people in church. We learn how to love our colleagues. So it is with God. It's a journey of learning how to love God. So this morning, we talk about how to love God. And what does that look like? We'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we are going to look at Moses' farewell speech to the people of Israel. And he's going to talk to them and remind them it's so important as a community that we love God and do not follow other gods. We are going to look at Deuteronomy 30 where 
Moses is going to teach the people how to love God because the fact of the matter is this. When we are loving God, sometimes we don't know how to love God. We can't see God. We, we don't know how to talk to Him. We don't know how to come to Him. And when we are faced with temptations or trials in life, we get discouraged. We think loving God maybe isn't all that a big deal. It's okay not to love God. It's okay to give up on God. So we all go through different seasons of learning how to love God and keep on loving Him. But we also face struggles where we don't feel like loving God. We want to love ourselves more. We want to love the world more than God. So all these are competitions when we talk about loving God with all that is within us. So Deuteronomy 30 is a passionate speech. And Moses is going to tell the people, this is how we love God. Now choose. Love is a choice. In any relationship, it is a choice. Loving God is a choice. You choose to love or you choose not to love. And God gives all of us a choice. As we can see in Deuteronomy 30, all right, Moses is going to say, choose today who you will love, who you will follow, who you will serve. This sounds like Joshua's passionate farewell speech also in the book of Joshua, where he tells a community. So today I'm talking to us as a church, not just as an individual loving God, but together as a community, choose today who we will worship and love. Let me just give you the background of Deuteronomy 30 before we read the Word of God. Moses is talking to a new generation that has grown up. The people of God, uh, Israel, they had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And they wandered for 40 years because they chose to leave God. That generation chose not to honour God. Although God delivered them out of captivity and slavery from Egypt, as you remember the Red Sea. Although they experienced great miracles, but that generation chose to live life the way they wanted. And as a result, God disqualified them from entering the promised land. Since they will not go by faith, instead they listen to their fears, they look at Egypt, and they said, we don't want to go where God is leading us. And that disqualified them from the inheritance that God prepared for that generation. Now, 40 years have passed. This is the end of the book of Deuteronomy. And this is where a new generation has grown up. And this generation might have asked their parents, why are we living in the wilderness? And this same generation will ask their parents, what is our future like? And they will get two stories. The first is, well, we are in this trial because we dishonored God. We disbelieved Him. But our future is God is going to bring us into the promised land. There will be milk, honey flowing, and our future is bright. So you have to remember, at Deuteronomy chapter 30, it's a crossroad. Will this generation walk a different path from their parents? And that's why Moses is so on fire. He's almost the end of his life because the next chapter records he's going to go up to the mountain, look at the promised land that he cannot cross over, and then he will be received back to God. And so that's the end of Moses' ministry and life. And so he speaks to the people and he says to them, all right, this is what it means to love God. Choose, choose very carefully. He's talking to all the heads of the household. He's talking to the leaders. He's talking to the families. And, and two words that will jump out as we read the passage will be today. Used at least seven times in the verses that we read. Today, choose. All right? So every day is a choice to love and to worship God. The second word that will come out is life or leaves. And that means whenever we love God, we find life. There is such a powerful connection between loving God that brings life. So let's read the Word of God together. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 to 14. The decision we make today 
affects the outcomes of tomorrow. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him and to keep His commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. This is a passionate, all right, and a, a speech by Moses at the end of his life. He sets before the whole community very clearly two choices. Choose today. Choose today. Life and prosperity or death and destruction. Everyone has a choice. And to God bringing his decrees or his purpose or his blessings to the people, uh, he does not give it without giving them a choice. Where, who will you worship? Like I said, these people have gone through a lot as a community. They have experienced miracles in the wilderness. They have seen how God provided manna for them and meat for them. They have seen how water came out of the desert. These are the people who knew God. When Moses told these people, he's not saying that you do not know God. He's talking to God's people, God's chosen people. Just as today, Deuteronomy speaks to us because we are God's people. We are God's children. And we are hearing the same command. Today, I command you to love the Lord your God. What a straightforward instruction. All of God's children, all of God's chosen people are commanded to love the Lord their God. And they have to choose. It is recorded in church history that this speech was not the only time said at the time of Moses. It's also repeated, all right? Every time the families gather together, uh, at the community, I'm sorry, every, every time the community gets together, they read the law, the Torah. It's read out. And they're reminded. So every time we are hearing today, so today is today, right? But if one week later we hear the same word, today choose who you will serve. It's an ever-living challenge because every day is a today. It speaks about how today determines our tomorrow. It is recorded that Moses' speech found here is also likely to be proclaimed during the Babylonian exile days, which is 6th century. Centuries later, all right, and that's where the people are in exile because they failed to obey the commandment of God to love God. And the same word is given to them. Today, if you choose God, you come back to life. So this is where we see God knows we are unable to fulfill the commandment to love Him in our own strength. In the same chapter that we have read, Moses tells them God commands you to love Him. At the same time, he's prophetic. He tells them, you will be going to exile you will leave God. Your hearts will be selfish. Your hearts will not honour God. So Deuteronomy 30 is a picture of how man responds to God. As much as we want to love this amazing, incredible God, our hearts are sick. We, we don't always want to love Him as we hope to. And that's where we find these words that Moses give in Deuteronomy 30 very assuring. It is not a condemnation. Uh, it is not uh, um, 
something to push people away from loving God. It is an encouragement to people who want to love God and keep on loving Him. So this is where we start. This word we now receive. The commandment is not difficult. Love the Lord your God and to walk before Him. Why love God? And Moses gives the people a very clear and powerful reason why we want to love God. And it's found in God. It's not found in us. It is found in Deuteronomy 7, 9, for example. Now, therefore, the Lord your God is God. God is God. Love Him. Uh, he is the faithful God. Love Him. Keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. So the command to the people of God to love God comes from a loving God who He Himself has given everything to love His people. It always starts with God, loving God because He first loved us. But here, Moses describes it as God is a covenant-keeping God. If at any time, you ask, why do I want to keep loving God? Because when you think about God, God is God and He is faithful, He is true, and we have sung some of these early this morning. And at the same time, He keeps His covenant. So we know this word covenant is very powerful. It's a promise God makes to His people, Israel at that time. A covenant that He makes with the church through Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The word covenant is He promises, I will be your God, you will be my people. And God never breaks His promises. So no matter how far away people go from, away from Him, He will always keep His part of the promise. And that's the picture we see of God's faithfulness. And Moses says God keeps His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. What a powerful picture of a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God. To such a God who will never betray you, who will never um, abandon you, right? who will never give up on you. To such a God, well, Moses said, love God because of who He is. I think of myself, when I love people, it's so much easier when a person is like described here, faithful, true. Um, and a sincere and kind. Well, to people without guile, it's easy to love them. How much more it is when it comes to God. And that's why uh, Moses encouraged the people, you can love God. It's not difficult. Don't look at the commandments that you have to keep. Look at the God behind the commandments. The God who is loving even to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. So let me conclude the first point. Why love God? Because God is God. We don't love God because there's a need in our lives only. We don't love God because um, we are born a Christian. Uh, we don't love God because uh, um, we get things from Him. Love God because God is God. He is faithful, keeping His covenant of love. In other words, never, never abandoning us to thousands of generations. And this is why... Moses said, don't depart from this commandment to love God. Then he goes on, and this way I think it really helps us to know how to love God. How do you love someone you can't see? How do you relate to this supreme being? How do you connect with him? And here, uh, Moses gives in verses 16 and 20, right, very practical things that we do. If you say you love God, these are the things that we do. But just as if you say, I love my wife, I love my husband, I love my children, there are things that you do to show your love. Not just the emotional feeling of, I love you, I care for you, but there are actions. So in Deuteronomy 30, 16, the Bible teaches us this is how we can love God. For I command you today to love the Lord your God. To love is to walk in obedience to Him. And to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase. The Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Here is a checklist. You can look at your life. Here's a checklist for the church. 
Do we love God by walking in obedience to Him and keeping His decrees and commands? This is how it shows whether we love or we do not love God. Verse 20, and then we're going to go a bit deeper. It says, now choose life. Choose life. Love God and that's choosing life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to His voice and hold fast to Him. So here is a speech by Moses. In fact, the whole book of Deuteronomy is like a sermon, a very, very long sermon, a very, very long speech. Many, many parts in the speech. But here in verses 16 and 20, there is a, um, a pattern. A pattern. This is how you love God and explains to the people. And then to drive, back, drive the point back again, he says, now this is how you love God. When we love God, we choose to obey God. Whatever that God teaches us through the Word, we say yes, we ask, the, we ask God for strength, we walk in it. It says here that to oh, love God is to keep His commandments. So when we read the Word of God, we learn about what is right, what is wrong, what is morally uh, uh, upright, and what is not, what is wicked, evil, Whenever we look at that, we are saying, yes, God, your decrees are perfect. Your law is good. It brings life. It brings healing. To walk and to keep His commandments. Then the promise happens. You will live and you will increase. Many Christians wonder, well, why is it that I don't live and I don't increase? I don't mean physically live. We all are alive, obviously. But there is... Um, when, 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 when Moses uses the word life or live in this book, he's saying you flourish emotionally, mentally, you are well, you are blessed, you live, all right, with abundance, you live with uh, uh, knowing that God provides for you, you live with peace, you have joy, you have uh, wisdom, life, there is life. Why? Because you love God, you obey Him, and you keep His commandments. So there is such a great blessings that come from loving God and keeping His commandments. And though we struggle in this, we continue to ask God to help us to love Him, to keep holding on to Him. And it says that you will live and you will increase. So one of the reasons why we do not prosper in our walk is because we disregard God. If you dishonor God, do not expect blessings apart from God's grace. But when you walk with God faithfully, then you know God will bless you because that's according to His Word. You will live and increase. So I think our motivation to go after the things in life is not because we want to get more than our neighbors. We want to prove ourselves. We are blessed beyond measure. When people look at us, how does that happen? That's because you have made choices that, that you uh, walk in God's ways. You honour Him. You live out His commands, His, his decrees. And therefore, God's favour comes greatly upon you according to the word that He has given to you. And He will bless you in the things that you will possess. There may be challenges, but He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will make also your path smooth. How is it that it is smooth going? Because you will love God. Let's go to verse 20. Here, Moses again describes, what is it like to love God? I love this. It says, love the Lord your God. Listen to His voice. So this is another part of what it means to love God. God speaks to us. We listen to Him. The word listen in the Old Testament is not just sound waves. It has a very special meaning of listen and obey. Listen and do. Hear and do it. So uh, in the Hebrew language, they do not have a word for um, obey. They just say hear, which includes doing, obeying. Listen and already in it, it means listen and then to do it, to live it out. So here, uh, Moses says, listen to his voice. God is a speaking God. Every time we read the Bible, He speaks to us. Every time we are at a crossroad, you ask God for wisdom, He gives it to you. Every time you are troubled in your heart, 
emotionally or sometimes there are so many thoughts in our minds and we want to know what to do, clarity. When we come to God, God speaks to us. Uh, God has uh, helped me in many things in, at work just by speaking to me. This is how you do it. This is not how you do it. This is how your attitude should be. This is how you want to uh, approach people. Well, listen to his voice. This is how you make plans. This is not how you plan for your future. And so on and so on. Listening is part of loving God. If you say, I love God, but do not listen to him, then you have to go back to your prayer closet and then pray, God, that I may submit myself to what you instruct me. And, and to love you is to listen and obey and submit to Him. And this is where we, we need the grace of God to help us because many times uh, we think that our ways are better than God's ways. And that's where we, are, we get into trouble. But God wants us to trust Him, listen to Him, listen to His decrees, His laws. Very, very hard to know God without reading the Bible. Brothers and sisters, I call us to continue to Take out time every day to read the Word of God and let the Word of God teach us about the ways of God. Let the Word of God reveal to us who God is. Otherwise, there's no way you can listen to, uh, to God without reading the Bible. Although we are Pentecostals, oh, let the Holy Spirit speak to us. He does. But oftentimes, He speaks also through the Holy Word. Amen? And that's why we need both the Spirit and the Word of God. And if we only have one, then uh, we are um, uh, imbalanced. Yeah. So I want to I call us to allow God to speak to us, listen to Him, even if it doesn't make sense to you. Uh, and of course, when we make big decisions, go consult godly counsellors, your spouse, a spiritual leader, pray with a pastor, uh, talk to uh, Christian professionals that will help you at where you are. And this is why... This is because to love God is to listen, to trust Him, and to follow Him. The last thing here, Moses teaches us, if you love God, hold fast to Him. Wow. Don't give up. Persevere. Because when we love God, your path is not smooth. There will be persecutions. There will be disappointments. There will be pains. There will be a price to pay. No matter what season we are in, uh, we will be tested. Our love for God will be tested. Uh, will you hold fast to Him? Sometimes we blame God for the many things that happen and do not happen in our life. We doubt God's love. And so we take back our love for Him because we think God is not worthy of my love. Why should I worship Him when He has done this or He hasn't done that? Our love is so conditional on what we want God to be like and what we want God to do. But the Bible teaches us when we come before God, God is God. Though we may not understand Him a lot, but we must trust Him because our God is good God, faithful God, keeping the covenant of love to thousands of generations. That's the, the kind of God that reveal, is revealed to us and therefore hold fast to Him. Remember, Moses is speaking to the community Sometimes as a community, there are people, our love uh, grows cold. Yeah, we just come to church, but we don't feel connected with God. Or we don't even want to read the Bible. We don't, we don't feel like we are Christians. We feel like our love is cold. There are times we have to fight that. Fight that. Uh, we come back to the fire that's in the house of God. We come back to the fire of the Holy Spirit. We come back to the Word of God who is like a hammer that breaks down the things that causes our hearts to grow cold. We will resist that. And we also want to do something about our hearts that have grown cold because we know without loving God, without choosing that life, then what happens is death and destruction will take place. Moses is so clear, there are only two choices. Life and prosperity, death and destruction. Choose today. He emphasizes, choose today. Who will you love? What will you do? So let me close by saying, to choose to love God is to choose life. When we love God, the life of God flows into every area of our family, 
of the work that we do and of the church and the community that we are part of. Deuteronomy 36 to 10. This is Moses' encouragement to the people whose hearts are prone to wonder. Okay, so you don't have to read a lot of Old Testament books to realize, wow, the people of Israel then uh, are always changing their minds about God. Same, same for us. Uh. Yeah, we are not always single-minded, right? We are double-minded, triple-minded. So this is an encouragement to us. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love Him with all your heart and with all your soul and live. Can someone say amen? amen? How can we do it in our own strength? We are prone to wander away from God. Our hearts grow cold. The Bible tells us our hearts will grow cold due to the increase of wickedness. It is true. Therefore, uh, we are so and encouraged by this verse and, and other verses that are like that. God must circumcise our hearts. He must take the knife and cut our heart. All right? The things that are not of Him, we say, God, cut it away. The fleshly desires, Lord, remove it. The emotions that are not... Uh, um, that are not sanctified, that are not uh, 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 under, the, under the Holy Spirit, those things uh, that are not of God, cut it away. Circumcision is very painful. It cuts away the things that are not supposed to be there. But in order for us to grow in purity, right, loving God, these clutter, these obstacles must be cut away. So sometimes when God takes the knife and cuts away the things in your life, He's pruning you and me. It's painful, but do not go away from God. Allow Him to finish that work. Because out of that, then you'll find your hearts um, miraculously, all right, there will come a love for God, a desire for God. So this is what Moses told the people of Israel. God will circumcise your hearts and your children. Wow, can someone say Amen. So we want God to touch our children, the next generation, the young people, the, the, and, and our children, right? Like God will also touch their hearts so that they want to love God. They long to be with God. They want to give Him their hearts and their souls and live. What a powerful um, work that God is doing. That's why I believe when Moses said loving God is not difficult, because God wants to do this, He will circumcise your hearts. Uh, we know from the history of Israel, Israel really felt very, very badly. Every generation almost went away from God. But God never gave up on them. Because it's a covenant keeping God. He circumcised their hearts. Give them a new heart. Give them a new heart. Give them a new heart. So this is a very good prayer to pray. I often use these words to pray for myself. Lord, circumcise my heart. Cut, 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 cut. Shape it uh, so that it has the love for the Father. Verse 7, The Lord your God, all right, will put these curses on your enemies who hate you uh, and persecute you away. All right, and He will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. And the Lord will delight in you and make you prosperous just as He delighted in your ancestors. So He is telling the people, when you love God, all these things will follow you. We don't run after these things. We look at how we love God and all these other things will come to you. Second, to love God is to bless the generations. We cannot miss it here. When he speaks to this new generation, he's telling the older generation, some of them died in the wilderness already, okay? They never got to enter the promised land. All of them died according to God's judgment for them. But to this new generation, he says, your children and your children, when you are blessed in the promised land, make sure they know God. So this is where he says, uh, God is a God who keeps his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. The, today, if your generation, as parents, your generation, you choose to love God, you are blessing your next generation. But I want to read the second half. Those who hate God. Those who hate God, what happens to them? He will repay to their face by destruction. 
He will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate him. Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give to you today. So today is this generation. Okay, it's not about boomers' generation, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Millennium, Alpha. Uh, we had that last Sunday, all right? But this generation, we are all in the same generation. God is speaking to us today. When you love God and you teach your children to obey me, all right, you are fine. I will keep my covenant to you and to your descendants. But today, if someone turns away from God and then teach their children to hate God or to reject God or to follow other gods, and that also death and destruction will come into those generations. So God really puts two choices before us. His commandments are to bring us into blessings. So this morning, I want to uh, once again remind us of the tremendous responsibility to teach our children to love God. You can teach them to do well in many things in life, but there's one spiritual commitment that we all have in this church, whether we are parents of children, regardless their age, all right, or whether we are Faith Kids Commandos. Uh, today is 1st September. Uh, generally, we uh, remember this as Teacher's Day, right? Uh, our church celebrates our Commandos next Sunday, all right? If you are a professional teacher, uh, so we, we do many things, all right, to uh, empower, to get our kids ready for their future. But so important, the one thing is teach our children to love God. We are the ones to teach them, not just their school teachers or their faith commanders or their grandparents, but we have to teach them. So how do you teach your children to love God? And this is what Moses says, Deuteronomy 11, it's not new to us. Put these words of mine in your heart and soul. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an album on your forehead. Teach them to your children. Talking about them when you're at home and when you're away and when you lie down and when you rise. Wow, what is this? Sounds very good, right? But talk about our faith. Talk about our love for God. Uh, show them how we love God in our everyday at home. There are times when your family will see you open the Bible and read. They are seeing you love God. There are times maybe they see you praying. And sometimes there may be tears on your eyes because God touched you. And, and your children or your grandchildren or your spouse see you loving God. There are times they see together we go to church. This is not to be compromised. Sunday is the Lord's day. We all go to church and worship God. No other activities uh, apart from that worship point, right? So that's loving God as a family, all right? We teach them, children, this is important. We uh, also teach them the Word of God. Uh, some families, they read the Bible together. Some families, they come and they pray together. Uh, most families, maybe they pray before they eat together, all right? But in that prayer, uh, put in something besides, thank you, Lord, for the food, cleanse it, make us not fat, and uh, bless those who prepare the food in Jesus' name, amen. Those are very good prayers. But maybe in that short prayer uh, time, you can bring in something about God's love, bringing about God's goodness, bringing about God's truth whatsoever. Teach our children. Talk about it, all right? Uh, and um, don't be quiet. Like We are secret Christians at home. And nobody knows. Okay? They don't see you like loving God in a very... Uh, of course, you love God in your heart, but uh, like what we shared, it, it comes out. Love comes out. It is that detectable. It can be seen. Lastly, I must close with this. To love God is to stay out of Egypt. So our hearts long to love something. It's universal. God created us to love because He's love. We can love God or we can love Egypt. We can love God or we can love the world. These are very real. Every day we have many, many um, temptations and many, many distractions. And that's why we say, God, how can I love you and not love the things in the world? Charles Spurgeon a prolific uh, writer says, when the love of God 
is shed abroad in the heart, the idols will soon depart, and the love of sin will take its flight. The way to fight idols, to worship things that are temporal, to worship things that will be burnt up one day, the way to fight these is to love God. The way to fight sin and the pleasures of sin. So we, 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 are, we have a sinful tendency. We want to go there, but we know it's destructive. We know it's addictive. It know, we know that it's, it is not holy. The way to fight sin is to love God. When God's love is in our hearts, then the way we look at the world, we look at the things that tempt us, um, the love of God gives us the, uh, the power to resist and to overcome. And that's why in Deuteronomy, Moses said, don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Egypt. So many times they want to go back to Egypt because there got lots of good food. It's a place of comfort. Although they were in slavery, but Egypt represented something that is mystical, a lot of gods to worship, a very colourful culture, never mind that we were slaves. And, and Moses would say, no, don't be fearful about your future. And they say, I better go back to the world. I better go back to Egypt. I will find some help there. You are totally wrong. Instead, Moses teaches them, right? Fear God. Fear God. And because you trust Him, then uh, He is the one to bring you into your promised land. So today, which direction are we heading? Back to Egypt? Then the Word of God is saying to you, warning you today, don't go back to Egypt. You will not find help. It, it will only lead to death and destruction. But if you are heading towards the promised land, the inheritance that God has for us, and today we know Jesus Christ is um, the, the one that gives, that, that Jesus Christ is the one that has uh, all that we need. Then we are saying we are heading towards that. And we will not find ourselves back to Egypt. So that is a powerful, powerful love of God that protects us. So I will close. Now choose life. Verses 19 to 20. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. Brothers and sisters, choose life every day. Then tomorrow you'll find that uh, this happens. You and your children live and you love the Lord your God. Listen to Him and holding fast to Him. What a tremendous blessing that we know how to love God. It is not abstract, like, oh, go by feelings, because feelings can come and go. But when you base it on the Word of God, why love God? He's God. He's faithful, keeping His covenant of love to thousands of generations. Then we know like this God is our God. I close with this faith assembly. As a community, we choose life. We choose to love God, no matter what circumstances may happen around us or in the world or in our nation, right? No matter what uh, hits us as a church, within and without, we say, hey, we choose life. We keep learning how to love God as a community, all right? So that we and our children and their children will be blessed, amen? And that's the culture, the kingdom culture that I very much uh, want all of us to be a part of. You love God, and because of that, when you come, you inspire someone to love God. You are down in your spiritual work, but because you are part of this community, continually the Word of God, the Spirit of God ministers to you and helps you back. And so this is why we are together in this. So we want to thank God for His Word. Loving God is choosing life. Let's pray. Father, thank You for this Word of life. Thank you for these words of life. We receive them. We receive them. What will you choose today for yourself and for your family? Life and prosperity or death and destruction? Would you just take a couple of minutes to respond to God? Just tell Him, God, my choice is this. Wherever you are, would you just 
tell God what is on your heart. I will love you. As for me and my family, we will love you and serve you. That is a prayer that Moses passionately calls the people at that time to pray and to let God take it happen. No one wants to choose death and destruction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me lead us in prayer. God, would you circumcise our hearts right now? Whatever the condition is, God, you love us unconditionally. And you want to purify our hearts. You want to make our hearts strong and holy and, whole, uh, and wholesome and healed. So we just bring our hearts to you. Today, as we come to the Lord's table, we ask that you will draw us closer to you. Draw us closer to you. For all those who are far away, God is calling you back. It's not difficult to come back to God. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't look at your sins, but look at God who is love. Look at Christ who has provided the way by grace to God. Draw our hearts back to you, Lord. Lord, for some of our hearts that are very distracted and double-minded, would you today circumcise our hearts that we are single-minded to love you. No matter what the price is, we are going to follow Jesus. Would you just do that work in our hearts every day? Thank you, Lord. For those that are hurt, that are disillusioned, we just ask God that you circumcise their hearts. Remove these things and give them a new heart to love you. And as our hearts love you, God, we ask that you will make us your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.